Sour mead. Sour mead is going to be the the big thing, I think. Well, and we have a and, and we have a talk on that at the yeah. MMA conference. There's a sour mead experiment with 13 sour meads yeah. that will you'll be able to all, go in there. All bacteria free yeast. Yeah. Souring yeast. And and like, yeah. Even better, yeah. And you'll get sour to go taste them all. Sour, sour, no sour bacteria. Yeast, yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. 13 of them. Oh, wow. 12 of them. One's a control. One's a control. I, I wish I could. Oh, that's right. You can. I forgot. Oh, <laughs> sucks to be you, dude. <laughs> no, you can buy, you can buy the videos. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, we'll yeah. go to a video after the conference. Yeah, yeah definitely. I want to check that out. Well, and there's going to be a paper written about this experiment. Okay. I mean, the video for this one isn't going to tell you a whole lot because it's going to be a bunch of people shuffling around with paperwork going, Yeah. You know? Okay. So, so, yeah, you'll just see them writing, and they won't really be doing anything interesting at all. Okay. But, yeah, she's going to write a paper about it. So we'll have a white paper about that after the fact. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I, I, I'm, I'm really super excited to, you know, about sour meads and the idea of sour meads, you know what I mean? So really great stuff. I know uh, Millstone, Millstone Cidery did a sour mead. I remember when I was down there uh, in Baltimore, you know, and it was good. It was good. It cool. There's not many people doing it, but I, I really do think, especially a lot of the new meaderies are kind of also dabbling in a lot of the session mead things. We just started dabbling in the session mead game. Yeah. Just because we were tired of drinking beer all the time at the meadery, we're like, let's just make some <laughs> make your own stuff. Yeah. Low alcohol meads, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. And, well, sour uh, meads. Uh, Frank Goldbeck kind of kicked off the sour mead I think so from too. a commercial standpoint. He was the first commercial to go sour that I know of. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I'm sure a meadery will step up and go, ah, uh-uh, I was doing that, you know. But, you know, but yeah, that's the first one I know else. about. Yeah. I don't know of anybody else that was doing it before Frank at Golden Coast, and then I know, uh, I know Fairbrother, you know, at Moonlight Meadery, they did a. Uh, I don't know if it was a sour mead or they just aged it in a. I know they aged it in a sour beer barrel, so I forgot which of the two it was. But yeah, the whole sour mead thing, I think, especially with all the new meaderies getting into like the session stuff, because it's cheaper to make, quicker turnaround time, uh, moves real quick. I think the sour stuff is going to start really coming into the picture there a lot more, especially with all like the new research that's being done, experiments. So there's another BJCP mead category that we yeah, need. Sour mead. Sour mead. <laughs> It's such, it, adds, it adds such complexity to, you know, I mean, that's why people like sours, you know. It's just something you can't recreate any other way. So that and a mead would be fantastic, yeah. Well, and I think it'll kick off a whole new series of people isolating interesting new yeast that we aren't using yet, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's too. And the, even just on the bug side of things, the bacteria. I mean, just be, the difference between pediococcus and Brettomyces and lacto. I mean, just between those three, there's a huge difference as to, sure. you know, what they contribute. So, I mean, an all Brett sour mead versus an all lacto mead even just right there there's uh there's a tremendous amount of difference between the characters and flavors that you're going to get from both of those especially if you're using those real funky brenamicy strains you get a horse horse stable barnyard and for that you just make a all traditional buckwheat honey mead and you're already i was there. just gonna say yeah just use traditional buckwheat honey and you're and you don't need that <laughs> Dirty diaper, fresh uh, fried pickles, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, locker room after the big game. <laughs> oh, that was always my favorite description of buckwheat, yeah. I made the mistake of making a buckwheat traditional once. It never did come out to the where I could drink it. And, and, and now, granted, this was like 15 years ago, so there was a lot of probably possible things I did wrong in making the meat itself that it didn't come out right, but, yeah, yeah. you know, it kind of soured me. No pun intended. On, on making buckwheat meads. <laughs> yeah, we have. We made two traditionals back in our early days at Melovino. The first round had was one third of the honey we used, buckwheat honey. Uh, the second batch of that recipe, we only used about like ten to fifteen percent. And even three years later, in the bottle, aged in the bottle, you still get all that buckwheat. Even at that low of a percentage, it's nice. It works, but. You could definitely still get that barnyard horse stable character. It's crazy. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'd say I think the band's starting to uh, fixing to start up, guys. So I'm gonna have to cut this a little short, just because you weren't gonna be able to hear anything anyway once the band starts playing. And I gotta save my voice. And then we're gonna go streaking through the quads. Yeah. 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 And then after that, uh, without putting our clothes on, we're gonna go give an hour long talk on me. So, yeah, me and Sergio and Bobby, so that should be pretty frightening. Uh, Yeah, 20 minutes from now. So, yeah. So, uh, thanks for tuning in to this experimental, first-time-ever mobile version of Got Mead Live. And you'll be seeing more of this at the uh, AMMA conference in Mazer Cup in two weeks. So, uh, thanks for joining us, guys. And if you're in New York and you're not at the New York York City Firm Fest, why? 
Why not? How come you're not here? You need to get here, like, right away. So uh, this is Vicky signing off, and we'll see you all in a couple of, uh, well, we'll see you all Tuesday. Putting something together and see if you guys can be going out of line council.